Breaking news, the NFL legalizes marijuana. Shut up. <laughs> what about... <laughs> <laughs> What it do is your host with the most, Finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Hoes, and you're inside the GGN News Network. And today I have a very special guest, the one and only, the queen, Aww. Nia. Not show, <laughs> but low. Nia low. So how did you get in this movie, Keanu? Keanu. New? Uh-huh, like the actor. Oh, for real, like Keanu Reeves? Yeah, like him. That's the name of the cat? The, well, the cat doesn't have a last name, but his first name is Keanu, like Keanu Reeves, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I like those two comedians, actually. Yeah, Key and Peele, they're great. I really like their shows. I like they're how funny they as out. hell. They do their shit, right? Yeah, they do, and they're smart. Like, funny is good, but when you're funny and smart, that's like... That's like a special, I think I'm getting a little contact high. All of a sudden my body language changed. I'm like. <laughs> how do you, as beautiful as you are, how do you always get associated with comedy movies? Like, <clears throat> you, you becoming like a comedy princess. That's really in, sweet. In, in a real way, because with great comedy movies, it's always a female that you love seeing and at the same time she can act. And I'm starting to see that you are associated with great comedy movies from Friday all the way to right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because when I first started in this business, I was never really interested in doing comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wanted to be taken as a serious, dramatic actress, and Boys in the Hood was, you know, my first um, major role, besides Made in America with Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson, but Boys in the Hood was really the film that sort of put my name on the map. Mm -hmm. And it, it was never my intention to do comedy. I wanted to do drama. I wanted to be like this dramatic actress. And what I found was that um, the, the answer was always, you're too pretty, you're too cute, you're too sweet to be in a dramatic role. Mm. And I just thought, that's so unfair. Who did you work with that gave you the most wisdom on and off the screen? Ooh. Um, you know, I absolutely love Lawrence Fishburne because there was a scene when Ricky dies in Boys in the Hood, in Boys in the Hood, and we actually spoofed that. Remember, we yes, spoofed we it. Yes, we did. <laughs> that was so much fun. We spoofed it for BET Awards, but there was um, a scene where I had to run across the street, and I'm like, "Ricky died." And it was the, the beginning of the hysteria so that the whole neighborhood knew. Ricky got shot was the exact line. And I ran across the street and I delivered the line. And I was a young actress, so I didn't quite know how to do it where it didn't seem overly dramatic, but it needed to be no, but big. Intense, yeah. He pulled me aside and he's like, I want you to say that like somebody you really cared about just got shot and don't hold back. It doesn't matter how hysterical you are. It needs to be big. And he really explained to me what that moment was in the movie, not just for my character, but mm. for the movie. And, um, and I said, okay, and I was nervous because you know, it was my first, first real dramatic thing. And John, you know, John was behind the camera and he's like, Nene, okay, we gonna do it again. <laughs> and then, um, I did it and it was fine, I guess. I mean, we only did like two takes and it worked. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, he's, he was pretty amazing when I was younger because he felt very caring and non-judgmental when we were shooting the film. And um, he would whisper things to John to support him, but not undermine him for the goodness of the project. And mm -hmm. so he sort of was the, you know, the godfather for us. And I think that's like invaluable. That's dope. And mm -hmm. as I look at that movie, I see his character is that strong. The core. That backbone, that, you know, through everything, he was always the rock, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's for beautiful. sure. Yeah, that's dope. That's one of my favorite movies of all time, Boys in the Hood. So funny, it was so much like my life because I grew up like two blocks away from where we shot. For real? Yeah, so they were like, so my agent calls me and she's like, there's this movie 
and this is very early, obviously very early in my career, but this is like how I make myself laugh because I, I was authentic to myself then and nobody even knew who the hell I was. She goes, there's this movie called Boys in the Hood. And I was like, yeah, right. Some white guy trying to write a movie about the hood. I was like, I'm not fucking auditioning for that shit. <laughs> like, that's exactly what, that was my response to it. And she was like, no, no, this is written by a black man. And I was like, well, send me the script. Mm -hmm. Let me see his Let work. Let me see his work. Because if he's from Beverly Hills trying to write yeah, about how we, we live to, and I yeah, ain't trying he to hear this be shit. from the corner. Please. So the script comes, and I read it, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually all right. And the next day I went in, I had a baseball cap on, didn't comb my hair, no makeup, because I wasn't really feeling well, and I was like, I'm just going to go. I went in, and John Singleton was like, what's your name? And I was like, who are you? And kind of looked at him like he was crazy, like, you're in my space. Mm -hmm. No one. And then two seconds later, they brought me into the uh, audition room, and I was like, holy shit, that was the director that mm. I just got smart with. And we started talking, and I was actually in Catholic school, just like Brandy. Um, my mom was a single mom. Uh, what else? I don't think, I, I think I was still a virgin at that time. Hopefully I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> no, no, I was not a virgin at that time. What am I talking about? I was not a virgin. So I didn't have that in common with Brandy, but um, I, knew, I had a lot to draw from because that, you know, the shootouts in the middle of the it night. It was similar to the It was exactly how I grew up on St. Andrew's Place. Mm. That's amazing how God works. Yeah, so he gave me my first role as a girl that I could really relate to so I knew what it so felt like. So it wasn't like. a stretch. Right. It wasn't a stretch at all. And what about Friday? Friday was just fun. Right? Friday was just hanging out. I'm so mad I wasn't in that movie. I know, why was DJ you? Pull up. I know. She probably didn't want to deal with Suge Knight and then back then. You know, Suge Knight was a monster back then. What you got coming up other than this movie that people need to know about? Um, so I am doing Uncle Buck with mm -hmm. Mike Epps, ABC premiering June 14th. That's big. On, on the real ABC? On the real ABC during the playoffs. Go Spurs. The one that the, that Go the Spurs. NBA Finals come on that ABC? That yeah. The real one? Yeah. The real ABC. The, the real, not ABC family. No. <laughs> the real one, <laughs> Channel 7. The one we yes. grew up with. The, oh boy. That's big. That's a, <laughs> that's a gigantic look. Yeah, I'm excited about it. We had so much fun. It was so nice to go to work every day and just laugh. Well, see, we need more of that, like television shows that are produced very well on great networks mm -hmm. that you can look forward to watching. Yeah, Will Packer produced it. We have amazing writers. James Lejour plays my husband, who's a great guy. He's been on a lot of TV stuff. Um, of course, Mike Epps, who every day is just an he adventure adds, so with he him. He has so much, doesn't he? He's so great. I just love that guy. He's like, why are you so nice to me? I said, because <laughs> I can see your heart. That's why. We have to talk a little bit more about uh, Keanu, because isn't this, I don't think we've yeah, ever let's even. let's talk about Keanu the we cat. We haven't even mentioned the whole reason we're here. Yeah, let's talk about it. Look, what's your character about? I play Hannah. She's married to Clarence. Mm. Clarence, honey. Very white. Name. Hannah and Clarence. Hannah and Clarence, you can kind of already get a visual. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know a nigga named Clarence Earl. You do? Yes, What's he like? Because Clarence is, is a such. Damn fool. Is he funny? Yes. Clarence is like such a funny name to me for guy. The movie's funny though. It's basically about, you know, this guy who his girlfriend leaves and he gets this cat and the cat becomes the new love of his life and somebody steals the cat. So Jordan and Keegan go out into the world to find this cat, and I'm married to Keegan, Keegan's character, Clarence, and he was supposed to come with me away for the weekend. He sends me off with his best friend who does naughty things to me over the weekend. Wow. I, come, I don't know what he did, because it's not in the movie, but mm. in my mind it was really, really nasty <laughs> and freaky and uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know what it was. He had your mind in the back of his palm. Yeah, it was not good. There was a lot of weed involved, though. I will tell oh, you right? that. It was so much weed. So much <laughs> weed. <laughs> I, hope, I better be in the clip. Thank you. I just believe we have a clip. Because I'm not in the trailer. Hannah! Hi! Hannah, baby! Hi, baby! Oh, my God, I miss you! 
Wait, where are you? Huh? What? No, I'm just out with Rel. I'm doing me. Are you at a club? Yeah. In, in fact, it's of the strip club variety, and I've never done that. You know, and it's I'm just I'm having like some really like rugged fun. You know. So you're at a strip club having rugged fun. Yeah, well, no, it's uh, it's not like that. It's not, it's not about the, the degrading of women or anything. It's it's I'm here for a very specific reason. And uh, no, that that didn't sound right. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, uh, it's not. It's complicated. I'll explain it to you tomorrow. Okay, whatever. Well, well wait, that, but this this is what you said you wanted, right? You said to have fun. Whatever, Clarence. Whatever. I just didn't think that being in a strip club was your thing. Yeah. Well, you know, shit. I mean. What do you think my idea of fun was, right? It ain't like my, my fucking lifestyle some secret. Why are you talking to me like that? See about it then, all right? What? I said, why are you talking to me like that? I've never heard you talk to me like that before. I, I mean, I, I, I talk like that sometimes. In a real way. In We're inside way. the Smoker Studio, Everyday People, AKA Real Nigga Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you some questions and you can answer to the best of your ability. Okay, ask me, hit it. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? Am I on time? Hot or cold? Hot. Harold and Bells or Roscoe's? Ooh, that's a, that's a hard one. Um, can I say both? Because mm -hmm. it really depends on what mood you're in, right? Because mm -hmm. one is like quick and one is like, oh my God, all of this food. Yeah. Good times or the Jeffersons? Now here's the thing. I definitely like good times more <laughs> than the Jeffersons, but I think growing up, I was more of age to watch the Jeffersons, so I watched it more. Mm -hmm. But I mean, come on, kid, dynamite, JJ, dynamite, JJ, JJ you can't, you can't go wrong. Janet with that. Jackson made her debut to the world on there. I know, and she was so, so cute. She was Penny, cold blooded. Holy crap! Favorite <laughs> pair of shoes all time. Ooh, Air Force Ones. Well, go ahead now. Yeah. I was going to say my shell toes, but my Air Force Ones, you can wear with everything. Universal. Favorite drink? Favorite drink. I think you're going to kind of laugh at this, but I've been kind of liking whiskey mm. lately. Damn. Is that crazy? Because I'm not really a... Shit. That's some shit I thought the truck drive I think so, it's... Uh, yeah, tell me what's your favorite drink, Hoss. I love whiskey. My favorite position is... <laughs> I cannot answer that. Why do you have such a dirty mind? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote these questions? <laughs> it's really wet here. It's soaking wet over here. Oh... It's just so wet. I love it over here. Is that enough? <laughs> We'd like to welcome y'all back inside the GGN. Today I got a special guest, Ken Peel, from the new hit movie, Keanu. Let's just jump off into it real quick. So how did you fellas meet? It's funny, I also wanted to just say for one second, did you see the time that we started this interview? It was fucking 4 or 20 p.m., dude. But we met a, a mutual friend of ours uh, who? who actually is on the writing staff for Ken Peel, introduced us, and said to both of us at some point in time, um, you know, you gotta meet Keegan. You know, you've gotta meet Jordan. He's biracial, he's a comedian, you guys are gonna love each other. And, and it was, it was true. We met and hung out at a diner for like, six hours one night and it's like comedy love at first sight yeah oh okay so it wasn't holy macaroni it was holy matrimony on y'all show man the tv show the jokes that y'all be doing man be way out there man and you know they be really going to the next level how do y'all come up with those concepts to create that comedic timing in in comedy business it's called heightening you heighten everything, you make everything higher and higher, you, take, you make the stakes go higher, so that sometimes we don't even know in the moment where it's gonna go, we just know it's gonna be crazier, we just don't know exactly how it's gonna be crazier. We have this one rule uh, with all of our sketches that we call, we wanna make, we wanna pay, make people stand up and walk, walk around, the, have to walk around the room, right. so that at some point during our sketches, you're watching TV 
you have to go, oh no, this is, he's too, he's a motherfucker. These niggas crazy. crazy. <laughs> this is stupid. These niggas is crazy. These niggas is crazy. <laughs> These niggas is, this is some stupid shit. These niggas is crazy. Fucking yeah. flying through the air. This is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we, we like it when people, uh, you know, when, when people have to laugh so hard that they just, they don't even want to laugh because it's so stupid. Right, yeah. So you like finding that line. You want people to say that, you want people to declare it. They, they're so beside themselves, you want them to go, this shit is stupid, you know, while they're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, y'all stupid, you know, y'all stupid. Yeah, it's that, yeah. that's wanna, the goal. We want to yeah. challenge people's manhood yeah. <laughs> with, our, with our comedy. Which one of you niggas came up with the concept of the film? So, uh, Keanu was the, the brainchild of, of myself and another one of the Key and Peele writers, a guy named Alex Rubens. And we basically wrote, we, you know, we were trying to write a Key and Peele movie that um, would be, you know, ready to go as soon as we stepped off of our show. Um, and the timing worked out perfect. And basically, we wanted a movie that would take uh, Keegan and I and put us in a really heightened, crazy situation. And I think in the, in the beginning, we're thinking like, what, what if we had to survive in The Wire or, or New Jack City or some, some really just uh, s s s Really gritty, hard. Gritty, yeah, yeah, hard. Yeah. The, the, kind of, the kind of movie or TV show that we love watching, but if we uh, ever had to step in there, we We'd be would... the first characters killed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was, that was kind of the, the nugget. And then at some point, we realized that it needed, a, it needed some heart to it. And so that's where Keanu was born. Why I didn't get a role in the movie? Answer me. Well, now, man. see. Okay, now listen. Let's know. Let's know. Man. You know, we listen. Where were you? Didn't show up. Method Man showed up yeah, to right. the audition. Where were? If you had come, all all it would need to say is, and then next is snut. Boom, you're right, in. Right, you're right. in. Just the snut. That's but all you got. You got to get your representation on it. So tell me, what does it take to get kicked out of the Bloods and the Crips? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably wearing plaid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> purple, so purple plaid. It's if purple you, plaid. Yeah. If you came to work that day, you're trying to get kicked out. That's that's, that's you're consciously thinking about getting kicked yeah, out. Yeah, you, you you it's you gotta you probably slip up with some gang sign, <laughs> you know. You got, you come in with like a carpal tunnel or something, and you just throw the wrong sign out. It's there's lots of ways. It's very easy to get kicked out, I'm sure. So, uh, what is the blips gang sign? The, oh, the blips, right. The blips. The, okay, so the blips, you, you're fine, because the blips are... It's, it's this. The guy's kicked out of the bloods and the cribs. It's like this, it's like this, <laughs> right? Because then, it's like, that's an L. Yeah. It's a, and, and then you gotta go like that. And that's how this, you do it. You can't just keep it like this. You've gotta, you gotta, that's a, one of the B bubbles. Yep. Right? <laughs> right? And then, this is the sideways <laughs> the L. Side. So yep. you gotta go, you gotta go like this, you gotta go boom, boom, mm -hmm. and then drop it in the front. So what do you guys have coming up? You know, movies, TV, cartoons. Well, we're branching out. We're doing a lot. We're doing. We're doing work separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I think we'll 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 definitely come be always coming together because uh, it's just it's, it's just too much a, fun. It's too much fun to play with yeah. them. But I, I directed a horror movie. Um, it's coming out. It's called Get Out. Um, and uh, I love I love directing. I love writing and directing. So I'll, I'll be working on a bunch of content in the horror thriller genre space, and, uh, yeah, and I just, you're in a you bunch know, of movies. Yeah, keep acting and producing, more for mostly for me, is like picking up new projects and seeing projects that I can help nurture and develop. But then we'll, whenever we, we'll, we'll figure something out, and then we'll, I feel like, my feeling is we'll come together probably every two years or so, or three years and with a new project and keep weaving in and out with each other so that, you know, the partnership will never go away. Yeah. It's gonna be like, uh, speaking of Richard Pryor, like Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. You know, we'll just keep coming together and keep coming together. This is the part of the show called Inside the Smoker Studio, AKA Everyday Real Nigga Shit. I'm gonna ask y'all some questions and you can answer to the best of your ability. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? I think the first thing I do is, uh, is I brush my teeth. It's the first thing, I gotta do that. Yeah. It helps me clear out the rest of my head. First thing I try and do, uh, I always try and remember the dream I had, mm. and I, I always always fail. Hot or cold? Hot. Cold. Crab or fish? Well, for me, fish. Yeah. Any kind of fish, right? Yeah, yeah. Fish. Go to fish. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going, hey, I'm going straight uh -huh. up Chilean sea bass. I'll go even for a specific on you. Yeah, black card. <laughs> black card, nigga. Yeah, that black card is the shit, guy. Ginger. 
Or Marianne. Mm. Or Marianne. Oh no, I'm Marianne all day. Marianne, you, you like that? Ginger. You like that? Oh, I'll take oh, ginger. I'm gonna take Marianne. I'll take ginger. She all day, drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ginger, 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 ginger. She got that lazy, lazy thing. She's like, ginger's got like kind of like that. You gonna put some in her? Lazy starlet, like, like she Lana knows Del she's Rey, good looking. Rihanna she's thing. Like she's like always in a hammock or something I like that. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I'm going, I'm going straight for that invisibility. Cause I just mm -hmm. want to know when niggas is talking about me. Like guys, I'm gonna leave the room. Leave the room. Get invisible. Come back in the room. <laughs> see what's up. I probably go for the mind reading power. So like, for, you'd be like, but you, you know, don't even need mind, mind reading. Sex, 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 sex. What the hell, man? <laughs> Damn, you nasty. You need help. Sex, 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 sex. sex, sex. Butts, 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 butts. Same thing. Mm-hmm. But when you're invisible, you can't close your eyes because your eyelids would be invisible too. Can't close your eyes. Well, that's a problem. You gotta think that's, about these oh, things. Oh, didn't even think about that. Snoop. It is worth it. It is worth smoking enormous amounts of marijuana because I would have never come to that on my own. Yeah. Well, thank you, you are a wise man. Thank you, you thank you, my man. brother. If you could see anybody perform dead or alive, who would you want to see? Um, I guess it would probably be, man, I'd love to see Obama just doing like Snoop's greatest hits or something like that. One, two, three into the four. Michelle just called. I gotta go back to the White House door. It's the same cutting it. You know, you know, it, it, it. That would be amazing. That would be, that would be amazing. Church. Preach. Tabernacle.